Hey guys, I hope you're all doing really well. Today I'm gonna to be sharing with you the first update for my 20 favorites in 2020 project pan. This is a collaborative project pan that was started by Denise. Her Instagram handle is at just some makeup pans. I'll link it in the description box of this video. And I just, I'm so happy that she decided to come up with this concept. It's a very simple premise actually. And I think it's something that us as project panners like almost wouldn't choose to do but it is such an effective and just such a perfect idea, especially for where I'm at in my lifestyle. I feel like a lot of people, myself included, you oftentimes want to try to pan products that are older in your collection or things that are super expensive or just things that are like not your absolute favorites, things that you don't want to have as a part of your like core collection. But this is just the perfect excuse to use the things that I absolutely love, the things I know that work for me, the things that every single day I'm happy to be reaching for and I just, I never get bored of them. So I'm so happy that I decided to do this project and thank you Denise for coming up with the concept. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's a really nice um, project pan for me for where I'm at with my life right now. I'm just so busy that I still want to make that time to like sit down and do my makeup because that really is one of my favorite parts of my day. I just love that ritual, but I don't want to be using things that I don't absolutely love. I don't want to be trying out and testing new products. I just don't have that desire in me right now. So these are just things I absolutely love. I'm so happy to be reaching for them consistently. So I'm going to share with you guys all of my progress that I've made over the last like month and three weeks about Two, two full months. I know I was supposed to update this project every single month and that just didn't end up happening for me because I did sit down about three weeks ago trying to film an update and my camera just died and I didn't have time to get back to it to hop back in and film the rest of the video before I had to go to work. So we're going to bust it out today. I'm probably going to try to be a little bit quick with all of the products, but either way, I am really happy to be sitting down and updating this project for you guys. I am actually gonna talk about these products in the reverse order of how I talked about them in the introduction. I just feel like switching it up, so that's where we're gonna do from here on out. So the first item I have here is this lip pencil by Bite. This is the lip pencil in shade 018. It's a gorgeous nude color. It really is like the perfect everyday nude. It really helps to just define my lips really nicely without looking too heavy or too harsh, and it's a beautiful creamy formula, so it just glides on. and. Basically, I've been using this most days, especially when I'm going to school, because I'll just toss it on when I'm doing my makeup like first thing in the morning, and then throughout the day, I'll just kind of top it off with a gloss, and usually I end up losing the lip liner, like the look of the lip liner by the end of the day, but it's nice to leave the house with a nice defined lip, and like once I've done my whole face of makeup to have it like really nice and pulled together to start off the day, but I have no desire to maintain my lipstick when I'm at school for like six or seven hours. I feel like I've made really great progress because I am reaching for it so consistently and there will be no issue for me to finish this up by the end of this project or even probably by the summertime. This next product is a mini lip gloss from Too Faced. This was like a gift with purchase at Sephora. This is the Too Faced Sweet Peach Creamy Peach Oil Lip Gloss in the shade Pure Peach. And as you can probably tell, I did finish this up. I finished this in a matter of maybe two or three weeks because it was just perfect to have in my bag, at, like in my makeup bag for school. So you can see I took out the stopper shortly like pretty early in the project actually, and I managed to finish all it all up. This is a really, really nice lip gloss. I loved the look of it. I loved the scent and the like, the little bit of taste and the texture of it was really beautiful, but I have so many lip glosses. I've actually only really purchased lip glosses in the last couple months. I added two new lip glosses to my collection, one in December and one in January. And so I'm happy to have one rolled out of my collection but I, I don't really feel the need quite yet to roll something in the place of this product right now, but maybe in a couple months time, I'll roll something new in its place. Here's another glossy kind of product. This is the Kapari Lip Glossy in the shade Hibis Kiss. This is a gorgeous, deep, like red berry kind of lip gloss or tinted lip balm rather, but it is so pigmented that I don't find myself reaching for it all that frequently because it is a little bit messy. It can be a little bit difficult to apply. You can see how pigmented it is and it can be quite thick. So it does require more precision than what I, 
I'm willing to do right now. Like lately, honestly, I wear lip gloss 90% of the time and it's just because I can just toss it on and I don't have to think. And my lips look like half decent and it kind of pulls my look together, but it's not really high maintenance by any means. So I haven't reached for this near enough. I do really want to amp up my usage on this and I actually think it might look good as a cream blush. I haven't tried it that way. I've told myself a couple times that I want to try it like that and it just hasn't become a part of my routine. Um, but I do think this would make a beautiful, beautiful cream blush. So I'm going to go on vacation at the end of this month and I think I'm going to bring this with me to try out that way as like a monochromatic look with like a nice dewy cheek and a nice glossy lip. I don't know. It's worth a shot, but yeah, unfortunately you can't really tell that there's any progress. I can feel a little bit of air happening in here, but I think the difference in weight will be the most noticeable way to see any sort of progress with this one. Another lip product by Bite. This is the Bite Beauty Amuse Bouche lipstick in the shade Chai. It's a stunning red brown lipstick. I love this color so, so much. And I have worn it a fair amount of times. I'd say maybe like five or six times over the last couple months, which is decent for me, especially when it comes to like a bold lip like this. Oh, I should show you. I have still a lot of product left in here. There's no way I'm going to be able to finish this in a matter of months. This is probably going to take me the entire year. If I can even finish it in the year, I don't know, but I definitely do need to use it a little bit more frequently than I have as of late, but I am enjoying it. Every time I wear it, I really just, I love the way that this color looks on my complexion and with my coloring. So I'm happy to be reaching for it and happy that it's a part of this project. And the last lip product I've been working on in this project is this ColourPop Luxe lipstick in the shade Tiptoe. This is such a stunning nude. I'm absolutely in love with this lipstick and I think unfortunately it's discontinued, but I'm going to use it up this year regardless. It is just such a perfect perfect nude shade like this is my go-to for sure it just goes with everything and I feel like this again just goes so well with my complexion it's just it's gorgeous and I feel like I've worn it so so much over the last couple months and yet the progress isn't actually all that massive and I think that's because it's so pigmented like one swipe and I'm good to go and it lasts for a few hours as well and uh yeah, either way, I don't care that the progress was very minimal. I know how much I've reached for this, which is just an absurd amount. Like anytime I wear a nude lip, it's this. And not not in a bad way, but I know I'll be able to finish it up this year regardless. And I'm really happy using it and uh, making it such a integral part of my makeup routine. This is the Annabelle Waterline Matte in the shade Mint. I really haven't worn this near enough. And you can see I have so, so much product. I don't know what I'm thinking when I said that I want to finish this this year, especially given that this is such a like colorful eyeliner. I really don't know. Anyways, I'm going to continue to try to use it up as best as I can. I don't think that that's something that's really attainable for me, but it's this gorgeous color. I love wearing it in the waterline and just along my lower lash line, but maybe over the coming months, I'm going to try to play with it as more of like an eyeshadow base. It is quite matte, so I don't know how well it's going to like draw across my lid, but I'm going to give it a try that way and see if I can um, make some more visual progress that way but either way i'm happy to be reaching for it and i really do think it's such a beautiful formula and color i love that eyeliner i just i don't know what i was thinking with my goal of trying to use it up this year and then the other eyeliner this one's not a favorite this is the only like not favorite in this project this is the ColourPop creme gel liner in the shade exit i just really want to get this used up i do have another one of Exit in my collection that I'm gonna roll in after I'm done with this one, but the amount of progress that I've made this past month is so minimal with this. Um, this product is loose, so you can see I still have a pretty decent nub there. I just don't love the way that white eyeliner looks in my waterline, and I haven't used this as a base because I really, like I don't know how I'm gonna draw this without just losing half the product, so. My progress is so, so minimal on this. My desire to use this is pretty much non-existent, but I am going to try to bust it out in the next couple months. I definitely want it out of my collection by June so that I can roll in the other one and hopefully get that one used up within this year too, because white eyeliner, it's just not for me. This is the Cover FX Shimmer Veil in the shade Amethyst. This is such a stunning liquid eyeshadow formula. I have swatched it here already actually, and you can see the color is just 
a little bit sheer in the sense that like it just looks really effortless but the shimmer in it is just so impactful and so beautiful and I find this is such a nice shadow that I can wear on its own entirely and it really does brighten up and like lift my eyes but I also pair it with a lot of the shadows that are in my pan those eyeshadows right now because the tones are just quite perfect for that and I just I love how much it makes looks look looks look so dynamic wow um it makes my looks look so dynamic that's a really difficult thing to say and, and it, i'm sure there's a better way to word that but it really it really does have a lot of impact you can see actually i'm starting to make a lot of progress on it there's a lot of visibility happening here in the middle of the tube there still is a ton of product it's definitely going to last me months and months and months but even now that I'm getting to this point where it's empty, I'm seeing that in comparison to the the Stila liquid shadows, that this is still holding its exact same liquid moussey texture. It hasn't changed in its formula or texture. It's not any more dry or harder to blend out. But the Stila ones, I do find that those ones dried out as soon as there was more air in the tube. So this is something I'm just so happy to be working on and so happy to be using and uh, I've definitely learned a lot about this product over the last couple months and I, I cannot wait to wear it in the summertime. I can't, I can't wait. I love this so, so much. I've got two ColourPop Super Shock shadows in this project and this was a little bit of an oversight for me. I filmed the intro to this project before I did my Panthos eyeshadows and I was feeling like, yeah, you know what, I can add a couple more shadows since I'm working on my Panda palette and my Panthos eyeshadows will be no problem, but I've kind of overlooked these over the last couple of months because I am prioritizing those two projects. But either way, there is a little bit of progress. So the first one is Hanky Panky, which is a matte shadow. Don't ask me why I put a matte shadow in this project pan. Like, I don't know what I was thinking. I have a palette full of mattes that I'm working on. But anyways, I have managed to hit a little bit of like side pan, not side pan, but like one of the other like, rings in the pan I've managed to hit. This is getting a little bit dry so I do find I have to kind of dig into the product and really work it onto my finger in order to deposit product but either way I am happy to be reaching for it and using it. I don't think I'll be able to finish it this year but quite possibly. And then the other one is ColourPop Lala. This is an ultra metallic. It is what I'm wearing today. I'm wearing it just all on its own. No bronzer, no transition shade, nothing. I just blended this out up into my crease and along my lower lash line. And it's so stunning, but I haven't reached for it near enough. I've maybe worn it maybe five times over the last couple months. So progress is minimal, but there is definitely going to be a discrepancy in the weight, which is a good thing. But again, not really sure I can finish off either of these this year. There's no way to see any visible progress with this, so I'm going to be very brief. This is the Milk Kush Fiber Brow Gel in the shade Dutch. I love this. I think this is just such a great tinted fiber brow gel. It's so nice. I am wearing it through my brows today in combination with the brow pencil that I'm going to talk about next, but this is just so so nice i'm definitely feeling like the wand is getting a little bit drier but otherwise i can't really show you guys progress other than with the weight which you'll see on the screen but yeah it's it's a really great product i do have the elf wow brow i bought that back in november and i've been kind of using that every once in a while using this one prioritizing this one of course because it is part of my project and it's significantly older than the elf one but um i think the elf one is pretty comparable to it actually so once I use this up it won't be like I'm missing it but I am really enjoying using it since it is a part of this project and it's a part of my collection and then the brow whiz is the pencil I was talking about this one's from Anastasia I have mine in the shade medium brown it's what I'm wearing through the majority of my brows today I really do like the way that this looks I really do like the formula of this brow pencil however I just don't really feel like I have a need for brow pencils so I haven't been using this like all the time because I do enjoy it and I do think that there's times when I do like the look that it gives me so I'm not really like pushing myself to get it used up sooner rather than later I will eventually finish it up through this project this year for sure it'll be done um I just want to kind of maintain like keep track really of how much progress I am making and I'm enjoying 
the process of using it, but yeah, it just doesn't feel like an essential to me. This is the Derma E Hydrating Mist. I'm loving on this product so much. It's so nice, and you can tell I've been loving it because look how much I've managed to use over the last two months. This will surely be done, I'd say, by April. I don't know if I can finish all of this within a month, but potentially because it's just so addictive. I've been using this before my skincare in the evenings as well as in the mornings. I've been using it to kind of just settle down the powdery look on my face. Not that I use a lot of powders, but just to kind of like meld all my products into my complexion all together. And I've just been really enjoying it. It's such a nice product. I, yeah, I'm really happy that I decided to put this in this project and you can tell that I've been enjoying it because of the amount of progress that I've made so quickly. Next up is the Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Bronze and Glow. This is a beautiful highlight and contour little mini duo here. And my goal is to hit pan on both sides, which I have not yet done, obviously, but you can tell there's definitely a dip happening in the highlight shade specifically. And the contour or the bronzer is definitely more tightly packed. So I feel like I haven't been able to make anything as noticeable, but I have been reaching for it just as frequently, if not more than the highlight. This is just a little bit of a more loose press powder. And um, I've been extremely, extremely liberal with my application of this, and yet I feel like it still isn't really showing that much progress, but definitely the embossing, like the pattern has worn down a little bit. I think it's gonna take me months and months before I hit pan on the bronzer shade, but potentially the highlight I might be able to hit pan on in a matter of the next couple months. But yeah, really enjoying using this, really happy that this is a part of this project because I have had it now for a year and a few months and it really wasn't looking loved when I put it into this project. So I'm really happy to be making more visual progress on this and enjoying it, especially right now. I'm at my fairest right now and these colors just work perfectly for me at the moment. So I'm really happy I decided to put it into this project now. Next up is this beautiful highlighter from Wet n Wild. Unfortunately, the brand is no longer what I would consider to be cruelty free, but Either way, I do enjoy it and I'm happy to be reaching for it since it is a part of my collection. This is the Mega Glow Highlighting Powder in the shade Precious Petals. It's this gorgeous, like almost rose gold, warm, pinky highlighter. I don't know if you can even tell in the swatch there. Can you even see it? Maybe I'll make a little bit of a heavier swatch, but I've been using this even though I don't think that it's really suited to my complexion at the moment. I do find that it does have a little bit of base pigment, which can be a little bit harsh on my skin right now. But I've worn it a handful of times. I'll really just wear it um, on the tops of my, like apples on my cheeks right here and blend it into my blush so that it gives a lot of glow right there on like the roundest part of my cheeks. And I've reached for it several times that way. I know I'll be able to finish this up this year once I do get some more color in my skin, when I have a little bit more of a tan. So the summertime will be when you see the most significant progress. I mean, now that I'm saying I know I'll be able to finish it, that seems like a lot. There's a lot of product in here, but I, I'm pretty confident I'll be able to actually finish this up this year. So I'm gonna keep making progress on that, but I think come like May, all the way through to like October is when we'll really see the most significant progress happening on this. And I do have one more highlighter in this project pan. This is the Balm Mary Luminizer, the cult classic, you know, the standard, just the highlighter that made highlighter what it is. So I really do want to hit pan on this. I haven't yet done that, obviously. I think this is the highlighter that I've neglected actually the most out of all the highlighters that I have in this project pan. It's just so easy when I'm reaching for the Charlotte Tilbury. I use the bronzer and then I just toss on the highlight and I don't even have to think about it. I just use both of those products in tandem. And so this one I definitely have overlooked, but I am wearing it today as my inner corner highlight as well as a, my highlight on my cheekbones. And I've used it enough that I think there will be a difference in the weight, but not enough that I'll be able to hit pan on this soon. Next up is the Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer. I have mine in the shade Bronzer. This shade is just a touch too deep. I am wearing it today, but I did end up having to blend a little bit of setting powder on top of it to kind of tone it down. But um, either way, it is a beautiful formula. I really do like this and I'm happy that I put it in this project because I do reach for it every once in a while, but I know come the summer, I'll be able to amp up my usage on it for sure. So you can see the pattern is still pretty prevalent. It's still pretty obvious there. 
Um, I really don't know what the stance is in this brand's like cruelty-free status because they have been seen selling in China and that's something that I saw back I think in November or something and I just said I don't really want to recommend the brand when I was talking about my butter blush at the time and I, I still don't really know the status of that like I think that's being investigated by a couple different cruelty-free bloggers but either way it is a beautiful formula I'm happy that I have it I just I don't know how much I recommend it if you don't already have it in your collection you know what I mean you know what I mean but either way yeah it's it is quite beautiful and very effortlessly buttery and just gives me the perfect glow and I love the fragrance of this I know it's quite polarizing but I think it's just so perfect and tropical and I'm definitely going to travel with this at the end of this month so next week I am going on vacation I think when this video goes up will actually be while I'm on vacation but I'm going to bring this with me because it's just going to be so perfect for on the beach next up is this setting powder by charlotte tilbury this is the airbrush flawless finish skin perfecting micro powder i have mine in the shade 2 medium this is what i used to kind of blend out the bronzer today and you can see it doesn't look very harsh at all and it just helps to kind of tone it down i've been keeping a little cotton pad in here because i'm so nervous about this breaking because of how thin this packaging is i really feel like the product is probably very thin in there but so I've been <laughs> traveling with it like this, but basically this lives in my handbag all the time. Generally, I don't set my entire face, so this lives in my handbag for those days that are really long and I feel like my makeup is starting to maybe come, like get a little bit oily or it's starting to break up and I just need to kind of re-perfect my base, but I don't use it very often for that purpose. I just tend to have it as a just-in-case and realistically I've probably used it under 10 times over the last two months because it's just not an essential for me. However, again, this is one of those things come the summertime I can see myself making way more significant and more visible progress on, but there is a slight dip potentially happening in there. It's just so minor that I wouldn't say pan is coming anytime soon. There's no way, but yeah, I think within this year I can finish it up. I've heard people say that once you hit pan on this, this is something that goes pretty quickly. So in due time, I think I will be able to finish it off. This is a Too Faced Born This Way multi-use sculpting concealer in the shade Almond. I've been reaching for this literally every single day. Today I'm wearing a tinted moisturizer, but I have a ton of this just like, uh, not a ton, but I have this underneath my eyes and like blend it around my nose and around my mouth. And I feel like it just pairs so perfectly with my tinted moisturizer to really brighten up the center of my face and to cover up all of my pretty severe redness and under eye bags that I have at the moment because school has just been ultra stressful. But this is just such a good go-to concealer for me. I'm so happy that I put this into this project because I don't even have to think in the mornings. However, I do have a pretty decent sized concealer collection and everything else is being neglected. But that's okay. I, I really do enjoy this. There is no way of telling how much I have left in here other than by the weight because I can kind of scrape a little bit on the sides and you can see it creates a little bit of a window, but it doesn't stay. And I know that there's still a ton of product in here. There's no way in heck this is going to be done anytime soon. There's 15 mils of product in here, which is half a foundation. And like I said, I just use it under my eyes, around my nose, and sometimes a little bit like around my mouth or on my chin. And then if I have any like active acne that is very stubborn, then I will cover it up with this. But generally on an everyday basis, I'm using so little product that I really don't know how long this is going to take me. But either way, really happy to be reaching for it. It is such a gorgeous formula and it really does offer a lot of coverage without needing a lot of product. And I find that it lasts throughout the day very well for me. And yeah, it's just, it's a good go-to. I wear it with all of my foundations and I love the way that it looks with every single base product I have in my collection. It just, it's good. It's a good one. And lastly is this primer by Urban Decay. This is the Optical Illusion Complexion Primer. I again want to finish this up this year. And you can see from there how much product I still have. I've managed to use maybe just over a centimeter of product over the last couple months. So... 
I really don't know how this is gonna go down. I don't know if I'll be able to finish this this year, but either way, I really do like the way that it offers a nice smoothing base to my complexion. It really does sit nicely under all of my foundations, especially I've been wearing just the Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue lately, and it sits so perfectly under there because I do feel like when I wear that on its own, my skin can look a little bit textured, but with this, it does look much more smooth and just it feels balanced, it's really quite nice. I do like this, but I use maybe half a pump at most. Yeah, I'm enjoying it, but I'm looking at this now and I'm like, okay, we're two months in. That means I have only 10 months left in the year and I have this much product left and I use this much product. <laughs> so I don't really think that's gonna, that I'm gonna end up finishing this, but either way, I'm gonna use it for the rest of the year and um, enjoy every moment of it because it really is a beautiful primer. But that is all 20 products that I have in this project pan. So one item is used up. That means I'm down to 19 items to work on. A lot of my goals are gonna be definitely long-term. I really don't think that I'll have any empties by next update, but I will have some empties, you know, in a couple months time for sure. So I'm really looking forward to that. But thank you guys so, so much for watching and for hanging out with me and I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.